Hi there and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Erin Eno and today we are going to be painting this quick and simple abstract floral. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, so before we jump in, I'm just going to show you the painting that is the inspiration for the one that we're going to do today. It's this one, um, and I had posted on Instagram, and someone had asked me if I wouldn't mind doing a tutorial, so you don't have to ask me more than once, so here I am doing the tutorial. So I am going to do today's painting in different colors, but it's going to be inspired by this. I'm not going to try to match it exactly, because that would just um, be too daunting. Uh, and I would probably fail. So I'm going to do my best to get as close to it um, style-wise as I can. So I had done that just on a whim on a non-cotton paper and I found that um, because this technique is going to be laying pa paint down, blending it out, lifting it up, that it was a little easier on a non-cotton paper. So um, it also just shows you that you can do some kind of cool stuff on not too expensive materials. So that's what we're using. Enough rambling about that. I have my Van Gogh paints, my palette, jar of water, paper towel. For brushes, I have a Princeton Snap in a size four round. And my primary brush today is a uh, Royal and, I don't even know how to pronounce this, Royal and Langnickel, um, three quarter inch oval wash. Um, you can use a flat um, shader brush. Let's see if I have one here, similar to this, but this is a little small. Um, but anyway, if you don't have like an oval brush, you can obviously use a square one or a rectangular shaped one, and that should work just fine. The idea is just not to use a round brush because we're going to take advantage of the fact that this is such a wide brush. Um, I'll just give you a little quick kind of demo of what I'm talking about. Because um, if you load this brush up, you can get some fine lines and you can get some... Well, I didn't really load that up. I don't want to waste my color. And you get some wide um, wide strokes as well. And then you can kind of combine them and do all kinds of kind of cool shapes that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do so easily with just a straight round brush. So that's why we're using this brush today. And I just got paint on my paper. No worries, that's all okay. So let's just jump in. I'm going to use, um, I'm not going to do purple like the other painting was. I'm going to use a mixture of um, ultramarine blue and viridian, which is what I have here. And it's a color that I quite like. I use it often, maybe too often. I don't know, who's to say? Okay, and I'm just going to start just laying down some kind of petal shapes. And I have to be careful because I have a tendency not to leave a lot of white space. So I want to make sure that I do leave some white space between the petals today. Okay, so there's just randomly kind of placing them down and kind of turning my brush to get different kind of shapes. I'm going to do another one down here. Like so. And I just drip water. You're probably wondering why I have my water jar on that side. It's just the way I do things. It's not the most convenient, but there it is. Do another one up here. Don't want to lose my white space. And maybe put a little dab in here, like a little bud kind of growing there. And then, whoops. And then I'm going to go and clean off my brush top it off my paper towel a bit and just go in and kind of kiss the edges of these and let them kind of bleed out off and just go all soft. We're not going to do that everywhere. Just do it, you know, 
here and there around some of the edges of the flowers. And the good thing about this paper, like I mentioned, you can lift the paint quite easily so you can scrape it. I'm hitting my mic and it's shaking the phone. So there we go. Um, just like that because it lifts better than it would if it was on cotton paper, even though it's, you know, almost dry because it dries a lot faster. So we're just kind of softening up some edges of the petals. I'm going to blend these ones right out. And you don't have to do it everywhere, but just maybe on the outer edges. It's up to you. And just be careful if you do have to scrub to kind of lift the, the paint a little bit. Um, because it's a non-cotton paper, if you work at it too hard, you can kind of chew your paper up so you don't go crazy. This one I want blended out a little bit more. Maybe just take some of that pigment and put it in there to make it look like they're kind of blurring together. It's just like a, you know, we're just playing around and just see what you end up with. You can even take a little bit of um, Payne's Gray maybe, just water it down and just, you know, tap that in just lightly, not a whole lot of it. We don't want this to be like too heavy a piece in the end, but just to put some interest in there. Then I'm going to go back to our original color. I'm just trying to remember how I did this, <coughs> excuse me, how I did this painting, but hopefully I will get it somewhat similar. So I'm just rinsing off my brush just a bit, getting, or sorry, just drawing off my brush just a bit to get a little more pigment. And I'm just going to kind of go back into this guy, put a little more pigment down. I don't want it too heavy because it is a dark kind of color anyway. Okay. So we're kind of layering glazing. It's not all fully wet and wet. And maybe put another little bud up here and maybe some wispy kind of leaves out here just like that maybe a little bud down here I don't know it's just playing around and just kind of lift some of it up And I'm sorry the, the bottom may be cut off out of camera view, but this is because this is a little bit of a larger size piece of paper that I usually, um, sorry, larger than what I usually work on. Okay, so I've got more of that pigment and I'm just gonna go in and just keep adding to some of these flowers being careful not to go too, too dark. Just like so. So we're just layering and we can go in and still soften some of those edges if we like which I think I will just do maybe here. I'm not putting a ton of water on my paper. And I do want harsh edges on some of the petals.
Okay. So now that that's down, I think I will go in with my number four round. And I'm going to go into the black. Fairly concentrated. And I'm just going to start putting in some light uh, stems. Just kind of squiggly. kind of playing around. It's still pretty wet up there. That's bleeding way more than I wanted it to up here. So I'm just going to try to get some of that up. And I'll show you what I mean about how it's a little easier to lift on cellulose paper. See, I can just kind of scrub that and it's pretty much gone. I just pick it up with my paper towel and there you go. Now I will wait for it to dry before I go in and try to put a little stem on that. But then in the meantime, while that's drying, I will start putting in some leaves. So I've just got some sap green with a tiny little bit of, um, what did it, carmine in there just to make it not so fake green, you know what I'm saying? Just make it more earthy. More earthy, I guess, is a better way to say it. So I'm just going to go and start putting in just some kind of same thing, just crazy, whatever, haphazard strokes for leaves anywhere and everywhere. So again, just using the edge of your brush and the flatness of your brush just to get some funky kind of looking leaves. Don't put too much thought into it. Just kind of slap them down. That's the beauty of the abs abstract. You know, just do whatever. like so. And I will go back in with the black. And just do a little, whoops. I just want to do a little kind of squiggly stem on this guy. Just something kind of funky. Same there, maybe one here. Maybe draw the lines right up into the flower. It's whatever you like. I just kind of played around with that last one and just did whatever. And I think the flowers are reasonably dry, so I'm just going to go in with the black again. And just do little kind of stamens in the flowers, just little squiggly ones. Everything's squiggly. And just put some little balls on the end of them. Just when you're doing this, make sure everything's dry because you don't want the black to bleed and go rogue on you. I like this color blue with the um, with the green leaves. I think it's pretty. Put some here. Let me get a little more paint. Don't want to rest my hand in there. Just some crazy squiggly stamens like that. 
maybe do a little squiggle on that guy. And then we can go in and add some darkness to the leaves as well. So just take that sap green again, just a titch of that carmine. And go in with a fairly dark mixture of that green and just kind of add a little interest to some of these leaves. I can even draw a line outside the leaf like so. Just like that. It's just whatever. You're just playing around. Just like that. I don't know what I'm doing. It's just putting paint down. Now you can go in with just a damp brush and just kind of blend some of these out if you want. There's no rules to this. That's why I like it. Just to like that. And then, last but not least, sorry if I'm shaking the microphone, um, I'm gonna go in with just one last kind of whoosh of, whoops, of the blue. I need to mix just a little bit more up. I don't want it too dark, but I just wanna add just another quick little layer on some of them. I don't want to overwhelm it, but just to give it a little more depth. So this is why you don't want to be too heavy handed right out of the gate until you see what you end up with. So I'm just putting it down wherever. that making sure not to get rid of all that white space which I have a tendency to do I'm not going to do it today the sky looks a little left out here there we go and then you can even go in and fade out some of these leaves just to kind of blend those edges out just to give it some just some interest maybe this guy here So I'm just kind of just reactivating that edge and letting it kind of bleed out. So that's basically all there is to it. I think it's pretty similar to the one I did before. It's looking like it. I can carry a couple more stems down, I think. Just maybe, yeah, one from this guy because that's not making sense. And then what I will do is take a little bit of black and add it to this green so it's really dark now and just do some lines to some of the edges of the leaves. I don't know, I'm just kind of doing it as I go along. 
So that's the way I did that painting and that's the way I'm doing this one. So I think for one last little hurrah, I'm going to go in with the blue or kind of turquoisey color for the flowers. Mix that up and make it a lot darker with just a bit of black. Okay, like that. And I'll just start putting some squiggles on some of these petals. I don't want to get carried away, but just the odd kind of squiggle. You don't want to do it all over the place. It's just to give it a little bit of interest again. It's not quite as dark as I would like. There we go. A little bit more black. And that, I think, is going to be it. Just like that. I think I want to add a little bit of green around the sky here. He doesn't look like he should be leafless. Okay, so I think that's it. I don't want to, uh, like I say, overwork it. So I'm just going to take the tape off now. It's just a quick, easy abstract. Let me get this water out of the way. You can see me knocking that over. And I'm going to remember how I tape this down. There we go. Oh, I'm tearing the paper. Well, there you go. I had tape on it that wasn't holding at all, and then now tape on it that was holding too much. I lifted instead of pulling the tape away. So anyway, no biggie. It's okay. At least it wasn't where any paint was. That's really hanging on to that paper. There we go. That's good. Okay. So here is your finished quick abstract floral and the paper is buckling a bit because we used so much water. Normally I would leave it uh, taped down to the board until it's completely dry and that would definitely minimize the amount of buckling. So I will just show you the inspiration piece that I had done a while back and this is what I came up with tonight. I hope you like it and I hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe you'll give this a go on your own. And if you do and you're on Instagram, please share and tag so I can have a look. And also um, please subscribe if you are interested in more beginner friendly tutorials if you haven't subscribed already. And that's it for tonight, guys. You all take care and I will see you in the next one.